Hey guys, so today I'm going to do part one of a two part video. Um, this was requested by Jason G. Hi Jason, uh, thank you for your patience with this. Um, he requested that I go over the very strange disappearance of Richie Edwards. And Richie Edwards was in a band called the Manic Street Preachers. There's a lot of discrepancies, um, a lot of different theories about what happened to him. So today I'm gonna talk about sort of what I originally learned and what I originally researched. And then in part two, I'm gonna discuss a book that was written um, not that long ago that sort of gave more information and more insight to the situation. And then therefore I'll give my opinion on what I think happened. So to start out, um, basic information, Richard James or Richie Manick Edwards, as he was known, was born on December 22nd of 1967 and he disappeared on February 1st of 1995, which would make him about 27 at the time of his disappearance. Um, he was known for his dark, politicized and intellectual lyrics. He has gained a cult following and has been cited by some as the <clears throat> as a leading lyricist of his generation, very much like Kurt Cobain. The ninth album by Manic Street Preachers, which was called Journal for Plague Lovers, was released in May of 2009 and was composed entirely of songs with lyrics left behind by Edwards. Up until 2005, the other members of the Manic Street Preachers actually um, still paid 25% of royalties towards Richie and put it into an account under his name so that if he ever did show back up again, he would still have his money that he made up until that point. But after 10 years of no sign of him, I guess that became sort of pointless at that point. Richie was uh, born and raised in Blackwood, Wales, and he was initially a driver and roadie for the band. He quickly became accepted as the band's main spokesman and then after that the fourth member. Interestingly enough, Edwards showed little musical talent, um, but his real contribution was in their lyrics and in their overall design. It's said that he frequently mimicked playing the guitar during live performances early on um, in the band's touring, but along with the bassist Nicky Wire, he was a principal lyricist. He, has, he is said to have written approximately 80% of the lyrics on their third album, The Holy Bible. Edwards suffered um, from serious bouts of depression in his adult life and was open, to it, open about it in interviews. He also went through a lot of self-harm, um, mainly through stabbing cigarettes onto his body, burning himself, and through cutting himself. He was quoted to have said, when I cut myself, I feel so much better. All the little things that might have been annoying me suddenly seem so trivial because I'm concentrating on the pain. I'm not a person who can scream and shout, so this is my only outlet. It's all done very logically. So it seems like in his life, he may have dealt with a lot of a feeling of not having control, maybe not having control over his life or his decisions, maybe even his musical talent, that sort of thing. And cutting himself was his way of controlling that sort of pain. Richie, I'm sorry if my nose is like really red during this. Um, my allergies are horrible right now, but continue. Can I help you, Bird? Richie um, did go through some hospitalizations involving his mental health, and I'll delve more into that in part two with the book review. But a crucial part of that information is that after being released from his most recent stint in um, a mental hospital, the Manic Street Preachers toured Europe as a four-piece band, which was to be the last time they would tour with Richie. His final live appearance with the band was at the London Astoria on December 21st of 1994. Now on to his disappearance. Edwards disappeared on the 1st of February in 1995 on the day when he and James Dean Bradfield were due to fly to the United States for a promotional tour. In the two weeks before his disappearance, Edward withdrew $200 a day from his bank account, which totaled $2,800 or euros by the day of the scheduled flight. Some speculated that he needed money for the scheduled trip, and it was also mentioned that he'd ordered a new desk for his flat from a shop in Cardiff. Um, however, there was no record of the desk having been, having been paid for, and this would only explain half of the money withdrawn. And this is where we start to get into um, the possibilities of his disappearance. 
there is a split camp in this conversation really half half of it is people believing that he committed suicide especially due to his history with mental health issues and depression and the other half seem to believe that he's still alive but just in hiding somewhere being reclusive but that includes not speaking to any of his family or anybody that he had previous contact with in his life according to emma forrest as quoted in a version of reason the night before he disappeared, Edwards gave a friend a book called Novel with Cocaine, instructing her to read the introduction, which, which details the author staying in a mental asylum before vanishing. While staying at the Embassy Hotel in Bayswater Road, London, according to Rob Jovanovic's biography, I'm sorry if I butchered that last name, Edwards removed some books and videos from his bag. Among them was a copy of the play Equus. 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 I hate that word. I can't ever like, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Edwards wrapped them carefully in a box with a note that said, I love you. Then decorated the box like a birthday present and decorated the outside of it with collages and literary quotations. These included a picture of a Germanic looking house and Bugs Bunny. The package was addressed to a Joe. And that's Joe, just J-O, not J-O-E, which makes me think it's a female. The next morning, Edwards collected his wallet, car keys, some Prozac, and his passport. He checked out of the hotel at 7 a.m., leaving his toiletries, his packed suitcase, and some of his Prozac. He then drove to his apartment in Cardiff, and in the two weeks that followed, Edwards was apparently spotted in the Newport passport office and at the Newport bus station by a fan who was unaware that he was missing at this point. So after he left the hotel, nobody heard from him. The fan discussed a mutual friend, Lori Fiddler, before Edwards departed, so she actually spoke with him. On the 7th of February, a taxi driver from Newport supposedly picked up Edwards from the night from the King's Hotel and drove him around the valleys, including Edwards' hometown of Blackwood. The driver reported that the passenger had spoken in a Cockney accent, which, occasion which occasionally slipped into a Welsh one, and that he had asked if he could lie down on the back seat. Eventually, they reached Blackwood and the bus station, but the passenger reportedly said, this is not the place, and asked to be taken to Pontypool Railway Station. It was later ascertained, according to Jovanovic's account, that Pontypool did not have a telephone. The passenger got out at the Severn View service station near South Gloucestershire, 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 and paid the 68 euro fare in cash. On the 14th of February, Edwards Cavalier received a parking ticket at the Severn View service station, and on the 17th of February, it was reported as abandoned. Police discovered the battery to be dead with evidence the car had been lived in. Due to the service station's proximity to the Severn Bridge, a known suicide site, it was widely believed that Edwards had, it was widely believed that Edwards had taken his own life by jumping off the bridge. Many people who knew Edwards, however, have said that it, he was never the type to contemplate suicide. And he himself was quoted um, in 1994 as saying, in terms of the S word, that does not enter my mind. And it never has done in terms of an attempt because I'm stronger than that. I might be a weak person, but I can take pain. Since then, Edwards has reportedly been spotted in a market in Goa, India and on the islands of Fur Fertiventura, I apologize, and Lanzarote. There have been other alleged sightings of Edwards, especially in the years immediately following his disappearance. However, none of these have proved conclusive and none have been confirmed by investigators. The investigation itself has received a lot of criticism. In his 1999 book, Everything, a book about the Manic Street Preachers, Simon Price states that the aspect of the investigation were far from satisfactory. He asserts that police may not have taken Edwards' mental state into account when prioritizing his disappearance. Price recalls a member of the investigation team as stating that the idea that you could identify someone from that is errant nonsense. So, like, you can't identify someone from CCTV, then what's the point of them? While his family had the option of declaring him legally dead from 2002 onwards, they chose not to for many years, and his status remained open as a missing person until the 23rd of November 2008 when he officially, when he officially became presumed dead. Caitlin Morin, 
um, writing in the Times, dismissed the news agenda of the mainstream media, which was geared towards the idea that Edwards inspired copycat action in fans. Pointing towards the edition of the 8th of April, 1995 of Melody Maker, Moran wrote of her distaste of the media treatment. She was quoted to have said, Arms were flung aloft and tongues tutted two weeks back, when the first anniversary of Kurt Cobain's suicide coincided with the two-month anniversary of Manic Street preacher Richie Edwards' disappearance, and Melody Maker investigated a debate on escalating teenage depression, self-mutilation, and suicide. In 2009, Joe Vinovic's book, A Version of Reason, The Search for Richie Edwards of the Manic Street Preachers, was published. The book was written with the goal of providing an authoritative, factual account pieced together through testimonials from those close to Edwards before his disappearance. So the final part of part one of this um, little series that I'm doing is some more recent updates um, from the past two years. From the past year, really. So on February 9th of 2018, which is just a little over a year ago, Richie Edwards' sister claims that new evidence um, came about um, towards Richie's whereabouts. As far as the original bridge that they had thought he might have jumped off of and where they got the CCTV footage from, his sister is quoted um, to ITV as saying, We were told that Richards crossed the bridge at 2.55 p.m. and we have the toll booth receipt that says 2.55. So we were led to believe that there was an eight hour window between this time of departing the hotel to cross the bridge on that same day. But it's since come to light by tracking down the person who made the bridge's time recording machines and making inquiries that that was a 24 hour clock and it always was. So that meant that 2.55 was 2.55 a.m. not p.m. So we are appealing to the people who have seen him at certain times that day when actually those times are meaningless now. So everybody that they asked around, you know, were you in that area that afternoon, wouldn't have seen him because he was there 12 hours prior. We are hoping that it will establish a new line of inquiry because this is vital information that changes everything and turns it all on its head and needs to be looked at again. And then a more recent update in January of this year, 2019, is about the book that I will get into in part two. Um, this article, which I will link below, stated that new evidence suggests that Richie Edwards staged his disappearance. A book called Withdrawn Traces, Searching for the Truth About Richie Manick by Sarah Hayes Roberts and Leon Noakes is the first to be written with the full cooperation of Edwards' sister Rachel and features unprecedented access to his personal archives. So this really goes in deep to Richie's life his backstory, his journals, everything, which is why it's taken me so long to finish reading it because it gets really interesting. The new evidence includes previously unreported sightings of Edwards alongside a long... My house is so fucking haunted, dude. It's not even funny. I'm just gonna ignore that demon sound. The new evidence... The new evidence includes previously unreported sightings of Edwards alongside a long-held fascination with disappearance that he apparently enjoyed since his school days. And it really does. It's really interesting to hear um, the fascinations he had growing up and things that he sort of did that would coincide with him faking a disappearance. The book also details an important meeting between Edwards and a woman at Cardiff's Whitchurch Hospital who later moved to Israel. By coincidence, the link came up again when co-author Leon went for a haircut in Cardiff and started talking about Richie. The lady cutting his hair said he's actually living in a, kibbu in a kibbutz in Israel and everybody knows this. As you can imagine, it took him aback. We gave this theory no particular credence until Rachel raised the same idea. Yes, Richie had been going on about heading to that part of the world just before he vanished. Another, other new strands of evidence include the theory that Edwards may have been, may, may have had undiagnosed Asperger's syndrome and disappeared in a bid to shut out the world as a coping mechanism. The book will also detail the mystery of a woman called Vivian, who was the last woman to see Edwards before his disappearance. She was in the hotel room with Richie the night before he vanished, but we haven't been able to track her down. Apparently the night before Richie was trying to give Vivian his passport, saying, I won't be needing this anymore. 
The book, which was released January 31st, will also detail theories that he may have had to disappear after significant confrontations and an apparent fascination for reclusive authors such as J.D. Salinger, who he'd had an obsession with um, as he was very much in love with literature as a whole. So that is the end of part one of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Part two will be sort of my review of the book, give you more information um, of what was stated in the book, and then my opinion on what I think happened to Edwards. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it or you don't like me, leave me a hate comment because I need to read some more hate comments and I don't have enough yet and I love reading them. Um, if you want to see more, please subscribe. I upload new videos every Wednesday and I will see you guys next week.